We're about to lose one. Get the intruder. Copy. We're almost there. Security breach. Attacking the area. Security breach. Shit, I've got movement everywhere. Everywhere. Contact! Yo, what's happening everybody? Welcome back, it's Hurts one more time with some more Spies vs Mercs A Splinter Cell Blacklist action, multiplayer of course Of course, uh, this time we're heading to the... Well, it's the Particle Accelerator one more time It is SVM Blacklist game mode I know that some of you guys do enjoy the classic a little bit more than the Blacklist um, I just had a surplus of Blacklist footage that I'm just working my way through slowly. Uh, Classic will return, I'm sure, now that I know that there is some interest out there. So, I'll get a little bit more up here in time once I get a, you know, once I get back on, grab some footage and find a couple of decent rounds that I feel are entertaining. We're looking at the Intel suit this time around, and at this BP-19, you know, this is like, this is the video of two guns that I really have a serious distaste for, but you know what? Through it all, a really solid performance, you know? I don't know, maybe the competition was a little light. I really do think the competition was a little light this round. Uh, and I don't like saying that necessarily, you know? I don't like taking away from guys that, that are probably pretty good in their own right at the game. But, uh, you know what? Guys were filtering in and out on the opposing team because they were taking a bit of a beating. A bit of a thumping. And, uh, but in the end, I had a really solid performance with both of these weapons. So, we're looking at the PP-19 right now. Kind of, once again, coming from, uh, from a request from a brain crasher who wanted to see the weapon. And, uh, and once this video makes it up, I think it's probably coming out of the loadout. And I'll be switching to something else, you know. Or at least for the Intel suit. So it's the Intel suit, PP-19. We did, I mean, it's the exact same loadout you saw last video when, uh, well, when old Gun Nuts stole the show at the uranium mine. But it's the RFD disruption, armored gloves, pocket pants, armored boots, and the flashbangs and the EMP. And you know what? Or the flashbangs and the EMP grenades. You can see right there, I'm, I've had, I've, what have I pulled in? Two kills now with this weapon, this round. I mean, at that close range, yeah, it's pretty effective. You can whip guys down, you know, buck guys down pretty quickly or fill them full of lead, you know. Really bleed the life out of them, but uh, there was just something I don't know. I, I think it's because it's because I'm running loud. I just I, I don't like it, you know. But uh, I settled in here pretty nicely and really had a dominating performance on the spy side, you know. I really did. I really had a great time here. So let's get into the action. Start taking a look at things after a botched attempt over there on the A terminal a couple times in a row. And uh, you know what? Through it all, I was actually pulling in a couple of nice kills. I decided I wasn't going to try and push in there too deep. And I figured I'd pick this hack up at B, which is what I did after taking out a couple of mines, some heavy explosives down in the area. Got them out just at the left. You know, I, I dismantled those suckers with my MP last second, you know. Now, you know, this is kind of a, a go-to location of mine. It's a pretty solid location, you know. So long as you don't get swarmed top and bottom here. Or, you know, somebody really knows how to uh, flush a spy out of there with some VX or with a drone. Um, as long as you're not getting, you know, assaulted from multiple levels at once. You can really work back and forth there, you know. From, from the top shelf to the bottom level, you know, depending on where the enemy presence coming from. Now that drop, that death from above, pretty solid, you know, great. I saw him moving in close, I thought I had the opportunity, I knew the mine was going down, and to be honest guys, I still am not entirely sure how I made it out of there alive. You know, a little bit of lag, I think, working in my favor that time around, as the mine just did not go up in time, and it gave me the, uh, you know, a small window of opportunity to dismantle it with that EMP grenade, you know. Because that was a big drop, that was a big drop from up above, and uh, that mine should should have detonated before I actually finished slicing and dice. And I, I don't know. Yeah, I could be wrong about that. It just felt like I should have died there. But anyway, I'm still carrying the sack. We're about to cross the 80% mark. And I thought it was smart to reposition it. If you noticed as that drone went flying on by, it probably was, you know. And I, I knew that one guy at the very least was aware that there was... Well, uh, my old location, you know, dangling on that ledge. And uh, that was probably his drone coming in. I could be wrong, of course, but... I thought it was a smart, uh, a smart move just to get out of there. And I, you know what? Not much activity. I don't know if it was uh, because there, there just wasn't, uh, you know, enough of an effort made by the Mercs on the other side. I think it was probably that the team was just doing a solid job keeping this sector on lockdown. You know, nothing really broke through after that initial kind of assault that I had to deal with back there in the corner. 
And uh, we get out of there with the intel, and we get out of there, and I get out of there in particular. I get out of there clean, you know. And I'm posting up here, I did see, who is this, gangster? The gangster coming in. I knew that somebody was going to pick this hack up on A. You can see I got uh, both the uh, Fotrix and the Breaking guy. Uh, I think that was his name. Uh, work in the upper hallway, you know, so I figure I'll post up here. Sonar comes off, and there we go, you know. Caught him really napping on a really, really uh, wide perimeter on this on this defense here, you know. Working a really wide perimeter, and that's great because then I can slowly filter back from one location to the next. Anybody coming back down there that's already been killed once will certainly be on edge. And uh, so long as I continue to kind of stick and move, get a kill and move, uh, I could have worked that whole hallway, you know. Probably successfully uh, for a couple more kills anyway, but I decided I was gonna push forward that Merrick guy You know, I don't know about this Merrick character. He never seems to be much of a team player uh, I don't know if he won't play as the, as the Merc if he will only play as a spy But I'm pretty sure he was AFK there. There could have been some other reason for it I'm not I don't really know but uh, I he was enough bait for me to move in and try and take him down You know and of course with this goddamn PP19 running loud gave my position away and I got gunned down. Got mowed down. You know? Anyway, and here we go. You see it in action one more time. This time it's Scanio putting him down. Ripping him full of lead. And I see my next, <laughs> what I thought was going to be my next bit of prey. And I should have known better. And moving in on a guy that's crouched in a corner like that. I should have known the drone was on its way up here. And it, he puts me down. You know, stops me short. He stuffs me. as uh, he, he was enough bait. That's twice. Twice I've fallen to some good bait out there. You know. But, uh, for the most part, having a pretty solid round, and actually enjoying wielding this M this PP-19 at this point. But I, I, there's still something I just don't like about it. I don't know. I, I think maybe if I were to spend a little more time with it, and that's the case with anything, with me in particular, and probably with a lot of you guys, I think a lot of you will agree, the more that you do something, and the better you should get at it, you know? The better you should get at it. Anyway, I'm just looking to, you know, creeping in the shadows, creeping in behind this crate one more time, looking to catch someone... An unsuspecting merc catch someone unawares, and, and I do. I put him down, and uh, here comes Mr. Disruptor. Not the gun nut. Not in this game. He wasn't present. But uh, here he comes. One time for a second pass on the low end, and you pay for it, Matthew. Matthew. Matthew Broach. And there we go. Now you did have a teammate in here backing him up, and uh, you know what? He after watching his, you know, or, or being aware that his partner. In crime had been had been stuffed there at the doorway. He plays this really cautiously, and this is really surprising. It's kind of a mark of, I don't know. I'd almost say it's a mark of inexperience here. You know, we've already got the one terminal, and and you know what? To have backed yourself all the way into the far end of the A sector when the hack is currently running in the C sector, just because there's a merc dangling at the or a spy dangling at the door, kind of a bad play. But he was playing it really cautiously. But you can see now what he was doing, really just waiting for his drone to uh, to recharge. And there it is. And I, <laughs> this was a what the fuck moment. What the hell just happened? Completely missed him. I was actually on the button to try and kill him. And then I, you know, you saw I, ha I had the opportunity to drop on him, but I didn't take it. Finally, I managed to get the kill. It felt a little, I don't know, a little glitchy. Maybe that same. Maybe maybe it's just hard to. To take down a Merc when he's in the corner. Maybe that's why you see so many drone operators, you know, pinch themselves off in there. And it was. It was it was difficult. I, I felt like I could do anything but actually go for his neck there. But eventually I got him. Eventually I got him. Could have just been me running a little too sloppy there. I don't know. I don't know what was going on there exactly. But it felt a little awkward. It felt a little off. And another pretty well heavy-duty frontal assault here on the on the spawning marks, uh, running a really wide perimeter here on the C sector. Gonna ensure that we get this uh, this hack in clean. And uh, I'm not the only one here. Breaking guy, I think he had perhaps just come to life, but uh, you see him dropping out of the out of the rafters, out of the crawl space up there in the ceiling. And uh, the PP19 going to work one more time for me. Having great success, I think, against ripping down Escanio here. And you can see Arush has had enough as he bails on the game. And so, you know what, like I said, there was a lot of kind of just guys filtering in and out of this game. And it really hurt the, t the other team. You know, once you start getting beat on like that, if guys are going to start leaving, it makes matters that much worse. It can be that much harder to actually recover from the deficit, you know, because then you're leaving your team short. So, I I'm sure that plays 
played a factor in the final numbers here, but uh, we are we're cutthroat. We're, we're relentless here in pursuing this, this intel. As you can see, we've picked up the new hack, and, and me switching things up, throwing in a little change up there with the pistola, a little dangle pistola work, putting down Yarkum there. And uh, you can see a new Merc creeping in the area with a little bit of backup. And the VX gas goes down pretty wisely, kind of guarding his entrance in the door, listening for the coffin. And I thought <laughs> get tricky with the pistol. I mean, it worked once. Why won't it work the second time? Well, Escania was all over me there. I think that's who it was. With the shotgun. Spreading, uh, you know, uh, shooting some shells my way. Sending, sending a little spray my way. And uh, forces me off of the dangle. And into the vents, and here we go, taking the back door here into the A sector. Hack's going pretty nicely so far, crossing the 50% mark. Oh, yes we are at the halfway mark. We'll see if we can take it to the full 100. Uh, you can see gangsters falling over here, one merc into the area. That's about all that that's in here right now. Not really, you know, they're not really playing this like, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> when you're on your third hack, you real there's a sense of urgency, you know. You don't want the car, the, the the deck stack completely against you, you know. You don't want the enemy team getting all three hacks, right? You want to stand. You leave a, leave a small opening, uh, a small chance of victory for yourselves. Anyway, it got a little ballsy there, triggering the intel suit at that range, but I. I really didn't think that he was going to look up there. Even if he had the RFP version, I really didn't think he was going to look up. Just by the way he was, he had already swiveled around to kind of check that side corridor where the vent begins. And uh, played it a little aggressively there. As I was getting a little antsy, I think, down in that, that bottom stairwell, knowing that the, the round or we were about to enter halftime, I thought, I'd, yeah, I'll go in for I've had some great success here this round. I'll go in and try and grab a couple of necks here, upper level at the main door. Kind of pushed the assault probably a little bit too hard, and it cost me. But there you go. I've seen some great numbers there. One hack, 16 and 3. And uh, <laughs> you know, just a solid performance by the team as we bring in 300%. And Foltrex there, a great support role with two hacks of his own. I think he pulled in numbers. I think his final numbers there were 8 and 5 with two hacks. So pretty solid. Now let's, of course, this is of course my other least favorite gun. Probably my least favorite gun on the Merc side of things. The MG4. I mean, it, it's effective, but it's big, it's clunky, it's blinding. You know, it cuts off a major portion of that screen. And uh, I don't know, I just I don't like it. But, uh, you know what, just because you don't like something doesn't mean you shouldn't try and use it. That's the only way you're going to like it, is to get to use it, to get better at it, put it into practice, and hopefully, you know, improve. Anyway, the MG4, motion tracking vision, disruptor suit, uh, enhanced detection, visor, right, and uh, armored gloves, pocket pants, running shoes, and of course the VX gas that you hear me put into effect right now, flush, trying to flush this hacker out of his corner, and the intel device. I also have that backing up the VX gas that you'll see coming to play a couple of times rather successfully as well. Anyway, there he was. I, you know, I knew there was only so many directions he could possibly head in. Uh, I really didn't think he was going to try and go upper level since that's where the VX gas came down from, and I'm sure he was aware of that. Uh, so he tucked himself into the corner and took a knife to the belly for his troubles. Escanio. Pretty, you know, I liked playing up against Escanio. I think we saw him on the hospital round a couple of videos ago, you know. And uh, he was he was okay there. You know what? Some you don't see it. I think in the videos, but he was in the session for a while. He stuck it, stuck it out. You know, he wrote it out. And uh, you know what? He was doing some nice slicing and dicing on me a couple of times. I think this round and in other rounds, it simply didn't make it and won't make it to the channel. You know, because he was whooping on me a little bit. So so good on him. So good on him. Just because you see me getting the better of him here doesn't mean it was always like that, right? <laughs> So here we go, they've picked up this C-Hack, I'm kind of on a mad dash, I mean it's a little, you know, a little hasty. Uh, I, I, I'm knowing where I want to go, and I'm heading there, you know, I'm checking all the kind of little likely locations, trying to flush flush the, the hacker out of his location, and, and force him to move into somebody else's line of sight at the very least, right, that's what I want to do. You can see Fortrex has fallen in the distance, I just do a quick check of the doorway, I am aware of my fallen comrade, you know, my right hand man over here. <laughs> falling in this side, this side, uh, this side hallway, this side room, and I did see the, uh, the, that little trophy system set up, so I know the hacker's in here, you know, I just had to make sure that nobody was gonna come in here and try and get my neck while I push forward, and I was kinda wait, waiting for somebody to come in here with me, and there he is, the breaking guy, you know, coming around the corner, doing a fantastic job, picking, picking him off the, uh, the pipe there as he was doing a bit of a dangle, a dangle hack, and uh, now it's just a matter of going into lockdown, you can see Escanio charging in, got really close there, really close, as I tried to reload the big MG4, get that new, that new box of ammo, it's not even a clip, 
<laughs> it needs a box of ammo, this beast of a weapon. Good lord. Good lord. And we, uh, I think we ripped him down. No, we didn't manage to rip him down before he ducked into safety. But uh, I'll get you here, Matthew. I got you there, man. <laughs> got you. Yeah, I don't know where where he thought he was going to run to, you know. Just kind of, you know, he was taking... I would imagine we had him chipped down to about one bar of health when he finally entered that hallway. So he was running for his life, you know. He didn't realize he was... Well, I'm sure he realized he was running run into his death, you know, when he came hustling down that back corner. Ascanio, a great, a great approach there. Damn that MG4. Damn it all to hell. And uh, Ascanio running that cloak really nicely, you know. Obviously, he has the whisper boots in there. I don't think I heard a sound. Didn't hear a peep as he approached. Closed the distance really beautifully. I mean, he has a tendency to do that, you know. And, uh, and and he got right up in my face, and, and I just couldn't do anything about it that time, you know. And he almost got me in the C sector, right, way back in there, you know. He got really close, just managed, I just managed to get the melee attack out in time. But, I, you know, after following him, tracking him on camera, I knew he was going to be there, and I made a beeline for that, that particular line of sight so I could mow him down before he broke right into the... Uh, broke right into the B sector and was able to cut loose in there and wreak a little havoc, you know, get the hack going. Anyway, the Intel device goes down, kind of guarding the laneway over towards this sector. And I didn't realize, you know, I was aware there's a guy over here. And I'm just kind of waiting. I'm waiting. I have my guy set up so that I can see both the window, the upper balcony, you know, and the doorway. So I can keep track and see where this guy is going to move to, you know. And I'm also watching and waiting to see if he's going to pop up on Intel if he retreats right out of the area. But there it was. I don't know if y'all caught it. There was a little glow. I did see the cloaked suit go wandering on by on the balcony. And I don't know why. I thought it was a good time to reload, sir, but I wasn't where he was coming, you know, I was just getting all ready for it, and, uh, and God damn it, it cost me, that was so stupid of me, so stupid, and I, I was really amazed that he was able to get the death from above so quickly at that range, you know, but a beautiful job, I thought I was kind of just baiting him in, I was waiting for him to, to close in on me, and he, you know what, it bit me, it bit me in the ass, <laughs> you know, it came back to bite me in the ass, and he puts me down, and they have this hack running, running strong here on the C sector, a little bit of activity I'm gonna have to deal with here by the looks of things. Somebody coming in behind me. Of course, it looks like it's a Scaniel. Yes, it is. He just has a he has a real presence about him when he's charging up with that cloak suit. You know, he does a really fantastic job of kind of weaving in and out of fire and really closing the distance. You know, he, and he pushes it. You know, he pushes it. He goes. It's like it's it's gonna be you or me, sucker. That's what he says when he starts that final charge. Whether you've seen him or not, whether you're spraying lead at him or not, that's what he says. It's gonna be you or me, sucker. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no retreat at this point, you know. The charge is initiated, and I'm coming your way, Hearts. And sometimes he gets me, and sometimes he doesn't, and there he is. Coming right back for some really fast revenge, putting me down, cloaked and everything. Silently just creeping in behind me, and, and scalped me, you know. Because he was coming at me, he had like the, uh, the high ground on me ever so slightly, you know. Because I was a few stairs down, and who was that running? Th Scanio, look at that. Running through there, put me down, put down the breaking guy, put down Fotrex. Doing some serious slicing and dicing. Amazingly, he didn't get this hack going on the B sector. You know, you figure he could have at this point. There we go, we see a little more cloaked activity right here. And I catch Matthew as he tries to enter the sector. He was, you know, he was going in for that hack. You know, you know he was. And uh, I realize, I think I caught him off guard, you know. Anyway, things looking really good. I mean, there's really not much chance that they're going to be able to pull this off at this point. Three, three and a half minutes, you know, we, we've got 300%. I mean, it's just not going to happen. So we're just going through the motions at this point. But, you know what, the action, I'm pretty sure, still stays pretty solid. It's been a good round so far. You know, good from my point of view. And that's, well, you know what, <laughs> since it's... It's, uh, it's my video, you know, that's always a good thing. That's always a good thing. Anyway, Matthew taking a page out of Scanio's, uh, uh, Scanio's playbook there. Coming in all cloaked. Doing him one better, though. Blinding me all to hell with that flashbang. And forcing me to put up some blind spray. And uh, he managed to get through it. No problemo, you know. And right in there, doing some slicing and dicing. I got my neck and uh, and slit my throat. There you go. Beautiful job by Matthew. And he earned it. You know, I've been uh, I've been sticking it to him pretty nicely with this MG4 thus far. Anyway, one more time with this C-Hack. It is going. They've got it up to about 40%. You can see what the, the guys are closing in on this, this far end of the room. Again, uh, this side hallway. And you can see that this... This trophy system's down in place, you know, and of course, I used to run this strategy. In fact, I think one of my older videos, it was a classic match, I made great use of running that ventilation, you know, that little ventilation shaft that cuts between the main room and that side room, and that's precisely what this fellow was doing as well, you know. 
So he played it pretty well. I don't think he was really expecting, or he certainly didn't want to see that intel device get dropped down because he played it beautifully to really avoid the patrol. But you know what? I, I picked him up electronically. You know, I guess I guess that just goes to show you how how well he was doing. That I had to pull out the electronic device, displayed all three of us swarming really in real the close proximity to that hack and spy. That I had to pull out the electronic device to actually get it done. Yes. And we did. We got her down. Put him down. And a, a pretty solid defense at that point as we waited, well, for this uh, this terminal to uh, re-secure, you know, for the firewalls to go back up. And uh, they pick it up opposite end of the building. There's not going to be much more after this. A minute and a half left. But you got to love the perseverance here. <laughs> you know what? That's what I gotta call it at this point. You gotta love the perseverance. You gotta love the kind of the never say die attitude. Guys came in here to play, and by God, that's what they're doing. Even when they're staring the feet in the face. <laughs> and uh, we lock it down one more time. You know, pretty. Uh, so I, I had a good time. You know, and and going back to what I was saying, the MG4, the PP19, two of my least favorite weapons, if not the the two at the very bottom of my list for weapons I like to use, you know, and, and really pulling out, as you've seen it, a pretty solid round overall. Now, right here, this, you know what, it's a, such a shame that I botched that, but I don't think it was going to matter. You know, if that was the man, because if you noticed when I dropped that first, uh, that first VX gas, you heard a little bit of coughing, so there was a spy back there. If that was actually the man that was coughing, he did a fantastic job. He didn't miss a beat in his, in, when he decided to charge, he went right in there, you know, because he closed that gap so quick. You know, and, and it got my neck, you know. So, botching that second VX gas grenade was the least of my worries, you know. Gargling, trying, you know, trying to get some breath through a slit throat was uh, was my real concern, you know. As life, you know, seeped from my body. And I was sent to the next lap, sent pack. Anyway, here we go, 10 seconds left. It's all but over. <laughs> it's all but over. The intel device, which has served me quite well this round. Uh, goes down one final time. I clean up those uh, that intel suit detection that had been made on myself. And my friend, you can see the intel device working its, you know, doing it, earning its pay, you know, earning its worth all the way into overtime there. And there it is, people. So you can see again. I mean, some really. There was a lot of filtering in and out on that bottom level. And I don't know where we began. The four guys that we began with, but we now have three here, and I would imagine there's at least two of them weren't there when the game started. You know. Anyway. That's what happens when, uh, well, when, you know, some guys just can't stand it. We've all been there. I'm not saying that I'm immune to that. You know, I've, I've certainly, you know, left the games uh, uh, several times. You know, it happens. It happens to the best of us. It happens to all of us. Some guys do it a little too often, though. And it really does hurt their team in the long run. Anyway, let's take a look at those numbers. You know, one hack, two defense, 27 and 8. I was really proud of that. You know, now breaking guy moving into second spot. You, you know, pushing Fultrex out despite Fultrex bringing in those two hacks. The breaking guy having a really spectacular round there on the Merc side of things. Bringing in two defense, 23 and 16. Solid numbers. Fultrex, you know, despite having a great run there on the spy side of things. Where he was, you know, two hacks, as I said, 8 and 5. Really had a piss poor run there as the Merc. Ended up, uh, you know, a pretty stinky 11 and 14. Now the Bry guy, 13 and 0. Spectacular. Coming in late. And uh, and just and four defense really doing a great job there. So gotta love that. Anyway, that's all I'm gonna really mention. You know, Escanio, I could mention him. I think he was probably there for the entire round. Uh, I know he was in there for a while afterwards. If if he just joined that round, I can't quite remember. But anyway, uh, you know what? A worthy opponent and certainly worth mentioning. Even though the numbers are a little out of whack there for him. Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by, or ladies and gents, thanks for coming over, checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was a you know a good show for y'all. <laughs> And uh, maybe the PP-19, the MG-4, well, at least, you know, maybe we saw them in a new light there. You know, the MG-4, it's not too, too bad. It's just big and clunky, and I'm not a big fan of it. The PP-19, obviously, I don't like the fact that it, it has no suppressor, but I certainly put it into play there, and it was a valuable tool to have on my belt. Yes. Anyway, one more time, thanks for stopping by. Hopefully you liked it. I hope you'll thumb it. I hope I'll see you in the next one, but until then, all remember why it hurts. Later.